hi everyone in this video we will see what is a random noise generator how different types of noise signals can be generated and uh, what are the purposes of these noise generators in the communication systems so random noise generator what is the purpose of generating a noise till now we have seen a sine wave generator square wave generator or any type of triangular waveform generator any type of signal generators we have seen that is okay but what is the purpose of a random noise generator randomly we are generating some noise signal what is the purpose of generating a noise signal what is the purpose of generating a noise signal what is the importance of noise what we can do with the generation of noise see in any communication system when information is transmitted from one place to another place like a suppose to consider a signal like this this is the channel okay channel may be either free space or wide and we are transmitting the signal from one point to another point the information what we are transmitting from one person to other person must be very secretly transmitted okay only these two persons should know what is the information that channel is transmitting okay but if any hacker if any hacker is trying to get the data suppose if the direct information without any noise addition if we are transmitting the same information purely then a hacker can easily hack what is the channel that is used to transmit the data immediately that data can be transmitted to that hacker so the hacker can easily get the data okay the, so that we will lose the information okay so in order to avoid such problems so what we will do we will generally add some noise component to this original message signal okay in the digital communication you call it as parity bits if you know in the digital communication in in the dc subject digital communication some parity bits are going to be added with the message information in place of two powers okay that information is transmitted to the receiver receiver after receiving the signal they will uh, demodulate the signal that means they will remove the parity bits and gets the original information this is what the process generally happens in the digital communication whenever the parity bits are going to be added the hacker which who is there in the center they cannot know which is the original information and which is the added information in the similar way in any analog communication uh, transmission information transmission also we are adding some amount of noise to the original message signal when whenever this noise is added when this channel is transmitting the signal suppose even if the hacker tries to hack that information after receiving it by him he cannot able to understand which is the message signal and which is the noise information so only the persons who are really wants to who really wants to transmit the data from one point to another point this person only knows the noise what is has what has been added by this one what by this person so that later after receiving he will remove that noise component and gets the original message signal this is what the what is the purpose of noise generation so for this we have we should have definitely a noise signal that has to be generated by any signal generator clear now let us see what is the block diagram of a noise generator this is the block diagram of noise generator so what are the different elements that we can prefer as a noise source see the first and foremost block is a noise source what are the different types of devices we can use as a noise devising noise source that is nothing but a diode or transistors diode or transistor any non linear devices that can be preferred as a noise generating source okay so a non linear device like a diode we are taking uh, that can use it to generate a noise information with a frequency range of 80 to 220 kilohertz it is not generating a frequency noise with at a high amount of frequency a moderate amount of frequency that it generates 80 to 80 hertz to 220 kilohertz so the, here we are using a diode as a noise source 
that signal because the noise generated by the diode is very small a moment of peak very small information small noise component is there okay that component is going to be amplified by passing through the amplifier by passing through the amplifier later here it is going to be modulated with a lock loss letter lock loss letter frequency it is having a carrier signal frequency with a very high frequency this is going to be modulated with the incoming noise signal at a range of 0 to 100 kilohertz here we are taking even the signal is generated at 80 to 220 kilohertz we have taken a frequency range of for the modulation is about 0 to 100 kilohertz after that we are passing this modulated signal through a filter through a filter in this 0 to 100 kilohertz in this 0 to 100 kilohertz there are three different types of three different types of noise signals will be generated what are they white noise pink noise and posasi noise what are they white noise pink noise and posasi noise so after the after modulating after modulated signal is generated when it is passing through this filter filter will give three different types of noisy components noisy values those are white noise pink noise and posasi noise after that some amplification is done and we are getting the complete noise output okay uh, you might have heard what is a white noise in the subject uh, rvsp uh, nothing but uh, random variables and stochastic process rptsp probability theory and stochastic process in such subjects you might have heard what is a white noise pink noise gaussian noise like that another noise is also there like osasi noise here nothing is there just a uh, based on their amplitudes based on their uh, uh, characteristics these names are given let us see the frequency response of these white noise pink noise and osasi noise filter see this is the frequency response of this uh, noise generator with the three noises like white noise pink noise and osasi noise see white noise if you observe it is having uniform spectral density from minimum frequency to maximum 100 kilohertz okay it is having uniform spectral density see here it is very less number of frequency around 10 hedges and <coughs> a maximum of here we have taken the filter which is having 0 to 100 kilohertz so up to 100 kilohertz we have this white noise as uniform spectral density almost <coughs> some slant is there but almost it is having uniform spectral density uniform spectral density okay that means we can say the frequency response of this white noise as one white noise as one frequency response as one that's why in any communication systems most commonly we prefer white noise because even whether the white noise is there or not that doesn't matter simply you can suppose some frequency response some other filters frequency response is there like this then if it is one we can say this is the multiplication of frequency response of one filter and frequency response of a white noise filter okay so that is a different story now so white noise is nothing but it is having uniform spectral density throughout the frequencies from up to uh, 100 kilohertz and another thing is pink noise see pink noise pink noise is so called because of its characteristics initial at initial frequencies at low frequencies it is having maximum amplitude thereby there on as the frequency increases as the frequency increases <coughs> what happens the amplitude decreases it is like red the characteristics if you know the characteristics of red characteristics of red what happens it is having highest amplitude at low frequency do you know VIPGR? VIPGR. VIPGR violet, indium, blue, gray color, violet, uh, yellow, orange, and red. What is this? It is a wavelength according to the wavelength. According to the wavelength. That means violet is having very less wavelength, less lambda, and R is having, red is having very high wavelength 
ஹை வேவ் லென்த் தட்ஸ் வே ஆர் இஸ் அட் த லாஸ்ட் ஹை வேவ் லென்த் ஓகே ஹை வேவ் லென்த் இஸ் நத்திங் பட் வாட் அபவுட் த ஃப்ரீக்வென்சி வாட் அபவுட் த ஃப்ரீக்வென்சி இஸ் வெரி லெஸ் ஃப்ரீக்வென்சி இஸ் வெரி லெஸ் ஓகே தட் மீன்ஸ் அட் அ லெஸ் ஃப்ரீக்வென்சி இட் இஸ் ஹேவிங் மேக்ஸிமம் ஆம்பிளிடியூட் okay high wave length it is having maximum amplitude at less frequency it is having maximum amplitude and as the frequency increases the amplitude goes down <coughs> okay another noise is osasi uh, noise which is uh, having uh, some maximum amplitude around 1 kHz which is having maximum amplitude around 1 kHz okay around 1 kHz it is having maximum amplitude this type of osasi noise is generally preferred for audio devices audio devices or audio instruments okay so these are the different uh, noises that are generated from this noise generator uh, see white noise is nothing but a noise containing many frequencies with equal intensities what we have seen a constant uniform spectral density so it is having uniform spectral density up to 100 kHz Uh, most of the communication systems uses white noise because white noise is present or not we can take always a white noise okay another one is pink noise pink noise is r1 by f noise is a signal or a process with a frequency spectrum such that the power spectral density is inversely proportional to frequency of the signal so as the frequency increases the amplitude decreases <coughs> that is the meaning of this one so in pink noise each octave carries an equal amount of noise energy pink noise is so called because the lower frequencies are having maximum amplitude similar to red light so and the third noise is osasi noise that ranging simulates the energy distribution of speech and music frequencies understand uh, remember this osasi noise works for speech and music frequencies that means it is used for testing audio amplifiers and loud speakers audio amplifiers and loud speakers in testing of these two devices it is preferred okay another type of waveform generator is arbitrary arbitrary waveform generator very simple very simple arbitrary means any type of random wave signal any type of random signal <coughs> see it's like a digital form it's like a digital form take a computer memory take a computer memory okay uh, it is having a different memory slots to store the information so here it is the first second third fourth fifth sixth okay this is having uh, some 1011 1101010 0101 1011 like this it is having some information okay now in this memory each and every cell this is one cell this is one cell this is one cell each and every cell 1 to 6 here or each and every cell is having a memory address <coughs> okay let it let us take the 1 and 2 3 4 are memory address locations now a clock is given to this memory address control to operate memory is always operated with a clock so that the data is going upon saving and moving now in from this memory address control what we are doing we are picking up one random data let us consider this data 3 okay so we are selecting a particular location a memory location in this memory address control so whatever the data in this memory cell what is the data in this memory cell now it will come out 0101 this 0101 will store in this ram <coughs> 0101 ram what do you mean by ram random access memory so it's a temporary memory storage element that takes the data from that particular selected address location now in this case it is 0101 <coughs> that 0101 is going to be transmitted bit by bit through this shift register through this shift register that means first one will be going again zero will be going again one again zero like this bit by bit information is going to be transmitted okay 
next what is the purpose of this digital to analog converter here the data we are taking from the memory location is a digital data that will be converted into an analog signal because our output signal is an analog signal output signal is a continuous signal <laughs> so we are converting the information i have say here for example for our understanding and convenient way we have taken a 4 bit information in general it is not a 4 bit information it must be a 32 64 or 128 okay so digital signal will be converted into analog data that is digital analog converter we have taken here the output of this one is going through analog output circuit it may be an amplifier so that signal going to be amplified and gives the output signal okay so this is the arbitrary waveform generator very simple just a random signal we are a random data we are taking and that data going to be converted into in our analog signal that's it okay thank you